so privileged uh, to have a chance to bring the word of the Lord. And we want to look at a topic, our position in Christ. Our position in Christ. You know, many times we go through issues in our lives wakati mwingi tunapitia mabituko mambo matukio katika maisha yetu and we end up thinking na tunaishia kufikiria that we are lowly or rather of a lowly estate ya kwamba sisi ni watu wa kiwango cha chini as opposed to what looks at uh, god, god looks at us ah. as kushinda vile mungu anatuangalia na kutuona tukivyo Who are you in Christ? Wewe ni nani katika Yesu? Who am I in Christ? Mimi ni nani katika Yesu? The moment I accepted Jesus and I invited him, him in my life. Wakati nilipokea Yesu na nikamkaribisha maishani mwangu. When you accepted Jesus and you invited him into your wakati life. Wakati ulimpokea Yesu na ukamkaribisha maishani mwako. Who did you become? Ulifanyika kuwa nani? Not to mention the place that you're coming from. Not to mention the background that you had. Because if we look at our background then at times it will make us feel very down. If we look at the families where we hail from, I don't know about yours, but when I look at the family I come from, I do not even have a way I could stand before this great multitude. Tukiangalia familia ambazo tumetoka, naona kwamba hata siwezi kuwa na nafasi ya kusimama mbele ya umati huu mkubwa hivi. But the day that we accept Jesus Christ. Lakini usiku ile tunampokea Yesu Kristo, he places us at a level. Anatubariki na kutuweka kiwango kwamba and many times the enemy would want us to remain in ignorance. Na adui angetaka tu kose kufahamu so that he can continue hitting us back and forth like a ping pong ball ndio akaweze kuendelea kutugonga na kutugonga kama mpira he can continue spreading fear in our lives ndio akaendelea kutuwekea woga ndani yetu he can continue causing us to live a defeated life ataendelea kutufanya tuwe tukuishi maisha ya kushindwa and so today i just want us to look at that nataka leo tukaweze kuangalia kuangazia hilo jambo and our key scripture scriptures will be coming from the book of ephesians na masomo When Paul, Paul is the author of the book of Ephesians. Now the church of Ephesus was mainly a gentile church. It was not the Jewish people. They were Gentiles. Walikuwa watu ambao si wa nyumba ya Israeli. They were a people who never had a name. Walikuwa watu ambao hawakuwa na jina. They were a people whom the Jews would never interact with. Walikuwa watu ambao Wayahudi hawangeweza kushiriki na wao. There was no way a Jewish man would be able to marry a Gentile girl. Amstana mtu ambaye ni Wayahudi hangeweza kuoa mstana wa kutoka hilo kabila. That was considered an abomination. Ilikuwa inaonekana And so Paul in his missionary journeys he gets to this place Ephesus and as he preaches a church is born in Ephesus. It is also worth noting that in Ephesus that's the place where the earliest civilization had started. It was among one of the the towns where there was the early civilization ilikuwa katika moja wapo ya miji ambayo kulikuwa na maendeleo but it's also worth noting na ni vizuri pia kutambua that it is in Ephesus where they, 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 they held the temple of a goddess that was called the goddess called uh, Artemis ah uh, ni pale palikuwa pale katika hiyo mji kulikuwa na uh, hekalu la And so before Paul went there these people did not know God. These people used to be involved in the worship of idols. 
They had set temples to the uh, the gods that they were serving. And so Paul realizes that for this church to be established, he needed to teach them something. And this something is what I want to bring just a portion of it to us today. So the book of Ephesians is divided into three. From chapter one to chapter three, it talks about our position in Christ. That is where when you get to chapter 1 you are hearing we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. You hear the scripture say still in chapter 1 from verse 3 there about it says that we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. So from chapter 1 to chapter 3 Paul is in essence talking talking about our position in Christ. Then chapter 4 and 5 Paul is talking about our walk in Christ. In other words, we are not only positioned but we are also going to walk the walk with Christ, the walk of faith. This is where he he is talking about the relationships of a Christian. How are uh, our uh, children supposed to uh, operate? What about masters? What about slaves? And then in chapter 6, he is now talking warfare. He starts with parents and children and then now he ends up by talking about warfare. And in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10 to 13 which we are going to read Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 to 13 Ephesians 6 Finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So you are being str- your strength is twofold. In the Lord and in the power of his might. Uh-huh. Verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Mm-hmm. For we do not wrestle. Can we read that one together? For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. 13. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in that evil day and having done all to stand. Bonas if you will. So he is introducing them to something because these were a people who wherever, whatever was surrounding them, there was so much of idolatry, there was so much of witchcraft. And Paul realizes that he has taught them about their position in Christ. He has taught them on how they are supposed to walk in Christ. But now he needs to tell them that in the midst of all that they are going through in Ephesus, they need to stand and they need to know who the enemy that they are fighting Yes. And so he is telling them that they are not wrestling against flesh and blood. Many times we go through things and there are things that cause us to hate each other in our families. They cause us to hate each other in our neighborhoods. They cause us to hate each other in our workplace and even in the nation. But we need to understand that there 
there is no any point in the life of a Christian when we are fighting flesh and blood. Tunastahili kutambua ya kwamba hakuna wakati katika maisha yetu kama wa Kristo tunapigana na damu na nyama. And so he goes on to introduce if we are not fighting flesh and blood then who is this that we are fighting? Anaendelea anaendelea kuwaelezea kama hatupigani na nyama na damu basi ni nani huyu tunapigana na yeye? If it is not my husband I am fighting with yes that is causing me to be so miserable as a wife if it is not my wife that i'm fighting with if it is not my workmate or my boss that i'm fighting with then who is this that i'm fighting with basi kama si mume wangu kama si mke wangu kama si mwenzako katika kazini ambaye napigana na yeye basi ni huyu ni nani huyu tunapigana na yeye and so he exposes four enemies that we fight with analeta mambo manne vitu nne ambavyo tunapigana nayo he is talking about we are wrestling against principalities anasema ya kwamba tunapigana na um tunapigana na principalities falme falme we are wrestling against principalities we are wrestling against powers we are wrestling against rulers and we are wrestling against the hosts of spiritual wickedness tunapigana na nguvu tunapigana na wafalme na tunapigana na nguvu za giza praise the name of the lord now who are these four ahaya mambo manne these are categories hizi ni viwango of powers vikundi vya nguvu in the dark world ambazo ni katika katika ulimwengu wa giza when we talk about principalities tukinena juu ya falme we are talking about the princes that govern a particular region or tuna, area of jurisdiction tunanena juu ya wale zile falme ambazo zina tamalaki juu ya sehemu fulani they are the highest level of wickedness ziko katika pale juu katika mambo ya dhambi then for them to be able to govern a particular region for instance nairobi ndio kawaise kutamalaki Uh, juu ya sehemu fulani they will delegate some authority to powers wanaachilia nguvu fulani kwa nguvu zingine so powers will be given smaller areas of jurisdiction nguvu zingine ma nguvu zingine zinapewa sehemu ndogo ndogo za kuweza kutamalaki then we have rulers na tunakuwa na wafalme wa, wa, wa now rulers are the ones who come up with the laws that will be enacted so that the powers can be able to enslave you and myself. Vile vyo wale viongozi wanakuja na sheria ambazo zitaweza kutendezwa kazi ndio ikaweze kupigana na wewe. And then we have the hosts of wickedness. Na tunakuwa na zile falme za dhambi. Uh, Now these are the ones that will be entering the people that I talked about that I said we are not fighting against. Uh, ndio hizo zitaweza kuingia kwenye watu wale ambao nimesema hatupigani na wao. A story is told by a man by the name Peter Wagner. Peter Peter Wagner is an author of intercessory books. And there's a time they went for evangelism in an area called Mexico. So for as long as they were within the boundaries of Mexico, it was so difficult for them to share the love of Jesus Christ by giving trucks. Ilikuwa ngumu sana wao kuweza kushiriki uh, injili ya Yesu kupitia yale zile vibandiko na zile and, and so they were right at the border walikuwa pale mpakani it was at the border town walikuwa katika ile uh, mji wa uh, mpakani so they crossed over after facing a lot of opposition they crossed over to the next uh, territory the next country baada ya kupata upigaji mkubwa sana wakaenda kwenye nchi jirani and they met with a man that they had met in mexico on the other side of the border who was so violent and who did not want to hear anything wakapatana na mtu ambaye walikuwa wamempata pale mexico na alikuwa mtu mkali sana hakuwa anataka kusikia injili and so they approached him with the same truck that this man had refused wakaweza kumpatia kile kitabu ambacho alikuwa amekikataa hapo mbeleni and the man was glad to receive it because the territorial spirit that was operating in mexico was not the same one that was operating in this other nation kwa sababu nguvu za dhambi ambazo zilikuwa zinatenda kazi pale mexico hazikuwa pale why am i telling us this story there are rulers and there are hosts of wickedness that at times operate in families they operate in areas in estates they operate in nations and for us to be able to conquer the 
places where we dwell in we must be able to know how to deal with them kuna nguvu za viongozi na dhambi ambazo zinatenda kazi katika familia katika sehemu fulani na kwa hivyo tu kama tutashinda ni lazima tukaweze kujua tutashughulikia namna gani where i come from within our family kwenye nimetoka katika familia yetu within the larger family katika familia yale ile ambayo ni kubwa the spirit that used to operate there roho ambayo ilikuwa inatenda kazi pale was operating such that there was nobody among uh, our cousins who would be able to get married and settle in a marriage ilikuwa ya kwamba hakuna mtu yeyote katika familia yetu angeweza kuolewa na kukaa katika ndoa and so people would get married to this man and then after leaving two children there you go to the next one they would settle at the third or fourth marriage mtu alikuwa anaolewa msana anaolewa katika ndoa ya kwanza anaacha watoto wawili watatu anaolewa tena anaacha watoto na mpaka ndoa ya nne ama ya hapo ndio alikuwa na and and so most of my cousins are either in the third marriage or the fourth marriage with kwa, children scattered all over na kwa hivyo binamu zangu walikuwa wako na watoto ambao wametapaka kila mahali katika why ndoa. because that is the territorial spirit that operates around that area kwa sababu hizo hizo ndio nguvu zilikuwa zinatenda kazi katika hiyo sehemu na and many familia. times we are under such bondages even in our families as we are seated na in this place sisi tunakuanga katika vifungo vya aina hiyo katika familia zetu and so a time came because of the lord jesus christ because i got born again at uh, when i just finished from four ultimately we were able to do a wedding with my husband ah na mwishoe nilipomaliza kidato cha 4 nikaweza kufunga doa pamoja na mume wangu and i had to start praying for my siblings because we i am the first born na nikaendelea kuwa mbea watu wetu ambao kwa sababu mimi ndio mzaliwa wa kwanza and all of them because i had opened a door for them all of them now were able to get married the right way na wote wakaweza kuolewa na kuoa kwa njia ifao kwa sababu nilikuwa nimewafungulia and so one day during my prayer time na wakati mmoja wakati nilikuwa naomba it was in the year 2001 ilikuwa katika mwaka wa 2001 on the 1st of june ah katika tarehe mosi pa mwezi wa 6 during my prayer time wakati nilikuwa naomba I had a wrestle with a spirit. Nikaweza kupigana na roho fulani. And this is what it said. Na hivyo ndivyo huyu roho alisema. You have been causing enough havoc to my kingdom. Only if you do not stop I will clear your entire family. Umekuwa ukileta shida kubwa sana katika ufalme wangu. Kama hutaacha nitaweza kumaliza kabisa familia yako yote. What havoc had I caused? Ni shida gani nilikuwa nimeleta katika ufalme wangu? Because I had broken the trend that was otherwise supposed to continue occurring in my family. Kwa sababu nilikuwa nimevunja nira ile ambayo ilikuwa iendelee kutamalaki katika familia hii. And today I am so grateful. Na leo niko na shukurani sana. Because here in sits people who can be able to say that it ends with me and it will not continue pursuing the rest of my family members. Ah nikasikia kwamba watu wa sita wakisema kwamba hiyo maneno inaishia kwangu na haitaweza kufanya kazi katika familia yangu praise the name of the lord you can decide to say i will stand and content unaweza amua ya kwamba mimi nitasimama na kuweza kupigana vita but this can only happen if you know who you are in christ jesus lakini hii itatendeka ya kwamba kama wewe unajijua wewe ni nani katika bwana the bible says in the book of colossians bila inasema katika kitabu cha wakolosai chapter 2 verse 15 ah sura ya pili mstari wa 15 if we can have that projected for us unaweza tafadhali tupate hiyo maandiko katika pale colossians chapter 2 verse 15 the bible says wakolosai 2:15 having disarmed principalities kwamba tulikuwa tumetoa nguvu katika and powers He made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them in it. Aliwaonyesha akiwa amewashinda hadharani. Can we look it in the message translation? Tukaweza kuangalia katika ile tafsiri ya message. So that today as, as we will be going out we will know who we are and what we are capable of doing. Ndio tukao tukitoka tukaweza kujua sisi ni akina nani na tunaweza kutenda kazi gani. He stripped all the spiritual tyrants in the universe of their sham authority at the cross and marched them naked through the streets can we read it together that's what jesus did what did he do he stripped all the spiritual tyrants in the universe of their sham authority at the cross and marched them naked through 
the streets. These very principalities, powers, rulers, and hosts of wickedness, Jesus stripped them off their sham authority. And so because he stripped them off, you can afford as a child of God to walk in confidence, to walk in authority without you feeling like you have been cast or you are being followed by some generational patterns. You can be able to walk in power. Irrespective of what has been happening in your family, in your workplace, in your neighborhood, you can be able to step right into your world by walking in power and authority because Jesus already did it for you and for me. In the book of Ephesians chapter 1, one verse 15 to 21. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 15 to 21. It says, Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, uh, uh-huh, let's go 16. Do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. This is Paul talking to the Ephesians. Verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Mm-hmm. The eyes of your understanding. Come on, tell yourself. The eyes of my understanding. Mm-hmm. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. It's a time when we need our eyes of understanding open and we need to gain wisdom and revelation. Mm-hmm. Verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places, which he worked, 20, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, 21, far above, tell your neighbor far above. (laughs) He raised Christ and sat him in the place of authority. At his right hand. And we will look in a bit why his right hand and not the left hand. Then the Bible says that the place where Jesus was seated is far above all principalities. You, you remember the principalities we looked at in the book of Ephesians chapter 6? Now the Bible says that Jesus has been seated far above all those principalities far above power far above might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but also in that which is to come. In other words, in as much as we are being told to put on the whole armor of God, we are fighting from a place of victory. Why? Because he who is in us has been raised up. He is now sitting in a place of authority, a place of strength, because the right hand signifies strength, the right hand signifies authority, he has been seated in a place that is far above all 
principality. And as if that's not enough, maybe we can go on and now read from verse chapter 2, verse 6. Our position in Christ. (laughs) Let's start from verse 5. Hallelujah. It is good you know who you are. Even when we were dead in transverses, made as alive together with Christ by grace, you have been saved. Then verse 6. He has raised us up together with who? With Christ. So unakumbuka Christ was raised up and he was seated in heavenly. Unakumbuka ya kwamba Yesu alipukuliwa na kuweza kuwa kama hali kwa kuchu. Christ. Yesu Christo. In the previous chapter. Tika ila sula itu liyokoma. Has been raised. Ameweza kupukuliwa. He has been seated. Ameweza kukazo. In heavenly places. Mahali minguni. And here the Bible is telling you and I. Unakumbuka wewe na mimi. That God has raised us up together. Na ya kwamba Yesu mungu ameweza kukuliwa pamoja na yeye. And made us sit together. Na mepitipanya tukakai pamoja. In the heavenly places. Mahali pale minguni. With Christ Jesus. Pamoja na Yesu. So in other words. Kusama kivi pia. If Christ. Christ has sat above principalities. It means you and I are seated above principalities. We are seated above powers. We are seated above rulers. We are seated above every name that is yet to be named. Praise the name of the Lord. That causes me to want to scream. Because then I know that the enemy cannot put me down. Because I am I am sitting at an elevated position where as I look I can look at him down and he cannot get to the place where I am. Praise the name of Jesus. That is your position in Christ. You cannot sit elsewhere. I normally hear preachers say that please sit on your enemy. That is too elevated for the enemy. I cannot sit on my enemy. How? His place is far below my seat. Hallelujah. He is not even supposed to be near where I am. Because I should be able to sit far above him. In my marriage, I will sit far above him. In my workplace, I will sit far above him. I do not not care I could be having a boss who does not know the Lord Jesus Christ. For as long as I'm doing the right thing in my workplace, if he tries to mess with me and I am doing the right thing as per my job description, then I can be able to call on the powers and legislate so that I'll be able to conquer whatever it is that comes to me. He has seated us far. Far above. Far above the witchcraft in your village. <laughs> yes, he has seated you and I. Far above. Far above all those things that have, made, that have been making us afraid. That some of us cannot visit, visit our homeland. Because we are afraid. Oh my goodness. I wish we would know who we are in Christ no. Jesus. We are already seated. Not we will be seated. We are already seated. We have occupied that space. Even your children who are bothering you, some of them are in drugs. 
You need to understand this one thing for sure. That as a child of God, you can be able to legislate from your place of authority and ensure that the children change because you have power. Because you have what? You have power. In conclusion, this is what I'm saying. When Jesus was exalted and seated at the right hand side of God, you and I were also exalted and raised to the place at the right hand of God. We therefore must take our position as children of God and challenge the principle and challenge the powers and challenge the rulers when the rulers are coming up with laws to be legislated we will arise and come up with our own laws that will because Jesus and us are seated at the place of authority. This is the place that is above every demon. Above every fallen angel. And above the devil himself. I heard of a, a man. I read about a man. And one time he was asleep. And so when he woke up, he discovered that the devil had visited. And so the devil was in the in the sitting room. Mm -hmm. So he could hear a lot of commotion in the sitting room, you know. <laughs> so he got off his bed. He was a child of God. And as he entered the sitting room, he saw the devil meddling with things. And so he looked at the devil and said, Oh, ni wewe. Shauri yako. Na akarudi akaendelea kulala. And he continued to sleep. If it were some of us, what would we have done? We would have screamed. We would have vacated that house. It is time for us to know who we are in Christ. So that the enemy will not come to remove her from our places of authority. A few years ago, um, we were asleep. So to go to Melala, when we were just sleeping, uh, at 1am uh, uh, I heard my phone ring I, I, my husband was deep asleep so I heard my phone ring I said hello I most of the time I on so that I kipiga atapata akiwa yuko sawa na ataanza kuimagine kwamba hawalalagi wanalala bwana sisters also sleep <laughs> so i said hello and the, the other side said hello and then they're like mama tuko hapa kwa gate they told me mom i'm here we are here at the gate nikawauliza gate gani niko na gate ndogo nyuma na ingine uko kwa gate gani kusema tuko hapa kwa gate wacha kucheza they told me to stop playing. We, we, we are here at the gate. Nika wauliza kwa upole. Muna fanya nini kwa gate? So I asked them, what are you doing at the gate? Kumbuga ni sasaba za usiku. Muna fanya nini kwa gate? Tumetumwa tukukate shingo. Tuma pesa ama tuingie. We have been sent to cut your neck. Mumetumwa munikate shingo. Nitume pesa ama munikate shingo. I either send my name or cut my neck. Fanya haraka. You know the way they are normally commanding. Ufanya haraka kabisa. Wanakuanga na mamlaka sana. Nika wambia ningo jeni hapo. Hata mimi nikona appetite ya kukata shingo. Wait for me. I also 
Niko na hiyo hamu ya kukata. So you know at that juncture my husband woke up. Wakati huo mume wangu akaamuka. Akashanga mko wangu anakata nani shingo sasa. He wondered whose neck is my wife cutting. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Yes, we need to come to a point tunastahili tufike mahali <laughs> where the enemy hatatuchezea. Uh, uh, where the devil will not play around with us. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Yes, so we need to arise. Tunastahili tuinuke and take our position in Christ. Tukachukue nafasi yetu katika Yesu. We need to come to a point where principalities, powers and whatever they are called are not going to make us shiver. Tukaweka tukafika mahali ambapo zile falme, nguvu za kifalme hazitafanya tukatetemeke. That as we walking into the house of the Lord. Tunapotembea katika nyumba ya Bwana. As we are waking up in our families to pray. Tunapoamka kuomba katika familia zetu. We know that we are fighting from a ngemtorosha <laughs> uh, today we would have sent him out <laughs> amen we are taking our positions bonesso we have weapons that have been availed to us tumkona silaha ambazo tumepewa our main concern should be whether we are putting on the weapons availed to us tunastahili kujiuliza kama tunaweza kuvaa silaha ambazo tumepewa our main concern is that before we leave our houses in the morning we should be dressing in the full armor of god and not go out naked tunajiuliza kwamba tukitoka kabla tutatoka nyumba zetu tunaweza kuvaa by so doing we will be able to conquer him because we are seated far above tukifanya hivyo tutaweza kumshinda kwa sababu tumekaa mahali pale juu zaidi bwana yesu asifiwe we are seated above curses tumekaa juu sana ya laana you are not cursable wewe huwezi kuwa na laana tell your neighbor you are not cursable ni yako wewe huwezi pewa Tell them even if Balaam would be called you are not cursable. Atal Balaam akiitwa hawezi kukulaa. Tell them even if they prepare seven altars with seven sacrifices you are not cursable. Hata wakitarisha madhabahu saba na madhabahu So they better concentrate with something else. Because you're not cursable. God has not given us the spirit of fear. He has given you and I the spirit of power. Of love and of a sound mind. In that you can be able to walk tall. You can be able to walk tall. I normally see when people leave Kesha at 4 a.m. in this church. And they want to go to their houses they look for the watchmen to see them off. That watchman doesn't even have a gun. Hata yule babu hana pistol. But you trust kwamba akikuzindikisha utafika. Na unaamini kwamba If it escorts you you're going to get home safely. I want to introduce one who watches over you. His name is Jesus. You can walk with him right into your house in safety. You can go with him up country in safety. You can even meet with that witch but we still be safe. It does not matter what the enemy has planned for you. Because That is who you are in Christ Jesus. Above sicknesses and diseases. Uh, above sicknesses and diseases. Ati daktari, ati daktari amesema uko na terminal illness. Uh, the doctor has said that you have a chronic illness. Nani alimpatia ruhusa? Uh, 
who gave the doctor that authority? Ya could declare death sentence to you. Ya kwamba kukutangazia kifo maisha ni mwako. You are seated far. Umekaa juu juu zaidi. And I'd like us to just rise up. Na ningetaka tukaweze kusimama. I don't know what it is. Sijui ni ni kipi that has been causing panic in your life. Ingekuwa ikileri kufanya ukaogope. I don't know what is it is. Sijui ni kitu gani that has been causing fear inakutishia maisha imekuwa ikikufanya ukaogope right at the tent outside i don't know what it is but today we have been raised up with christ lakini leo leo tumeweza kuinuliwa pamoja na kristo and we are seated far above na tumekaa juu zaidi sang a song and said we've been deceived by the devil too. what he said was his has been ours all along and so this morning we are going to tear the devil's kingdom down so that we can take that which belongs to us he took away our peace take it now Take it back. Bona sifiwe. Did he make you to be peaceless in your marriage? Alikufanya usikwe na amani katika ndoa yako. Today before you walk out of that door. Leo leo kabla hujatoka kwa ile mlango. Chukua amani yako. And walk with it. Na ukatembee nayo. The Bible says that Jesus when he died he went to hell. Alipoenda alikufa alienda pale. And he the key from the devil. Aliweza kumbokonya kipungu. And he came back victorious. Na akakuja na ushindi. The devil no longer has the key to your life. And so today even as we are praying and the ministry team will come right in front as we are praying today you can be able to tell the devil this peace has not been yours it has been mine all along and so i am taking it these children have been mine all along and so i am taking back my son i am taking back my daughter i am taking back my spouse because he was not yours in the first instance i am taking them back he has caused you to not have peace in your workplace it is time for you to walk in the spiritual realm in your workspace and tell the enemy enough is enough i have come not to negotiate with you eh sijakuja kukuambia tafadhali eh eh sio tafadhali nimekuja kukuambia ninataka it was mine I've from the beginning say, I want. and therefore it's going to be mine oh yes lift your voice those who are seated there and begin calling on the lord begin making demands make demands make demands because you are seated far above for those who want to come and connect with someone here you can come back and connect in the name of jesus Oh, reka shana la bakasan torobosia ya.